Hey everyone, welcome back to Juggling Gym. In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve a Rubik's Cube while juggling. And now, in the beginning, this trick feels impossible, but if you follow the steps I'm going to show you, then you will learn how to do it. Also, stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm going to show you some example solves from my perspective. I'm also going to give you some special tips that help me when I'm solving a Rubik's Cube. Let's get started. To do this trick, you need to know how to juggle two balls in one hand. You're going to be juggling two balls in your right hand and solving the Rubik's Cube in your left hand. So this is the same if you're right-handed or left-handed. I'll talk more about why later in the video. Next, you need to know how to solve a Rubik's Cube with any method. Now, of course, the faster you solve the Rubik's Cube, the better, because then you don't have to juggle as long. I have a video on ways to get faster at solving the Rubik's Cube without learning an entirely new method. You can also learn CFOP, which is a more intermediate method. It just involves a lot of memorization. The first step to learning how to solve a Rubik's Cube while juggling is learning how to solve a Rubik's Cube with one hand. And if you already know how to do that, you can just jump to this timestamp over here. You're going to need a Rubik's Cube that's not the Rubik's brand Rubik's Cube because those are really hard to turn. So my Rubik's Cube has magnets on the inside. So when we pull it apart, it kind of pops back together and that makes it a lot easier to turn. I'm going to put the name of the one I have in the description. I'm right handed, but I use my left hand to solve a Rubik's Cube with one hand. So the reason I do this is that it's a lot easier to do R moves and R prime moves with your left hand than your right hand. And if you don't know what the notation means, I have another video that talks about it and I'll link that in the description too. So R just means you're going to move the right side forward, which I use with my thumb like that. And to move it backwards, I just do the same thing, but in reverse with my thumb like that. And to hold it, I kind of put pressure on the center with my thumb and then also my middle finger back here. And I'm also holding it with my other fingers around it. Now I'm gonna show you some of the other moves that you can do. So if you're gonna move the top part clockwise, a U move, I just use my thumb like that. And to move it backwards, I use my index finger. And if it doesn't make it all the way with my index finger, I kind of push it a little bit also with my middle finger so it'll go into place. To move the front part clockwise, I just use my thumb like that. So that's an F move. And then to do the F prime move, then I just move it backwards like that. So this is one left algorithm away from being solved. But it feels really awkward to do this and put it back. I've discovered it's slipping now. And so instead, I'm going to just rotate the cube like this. And then I'm going to move this front part counterclockwise, so an F prime move, then I'm going to move upper part counterclockwise, so U prime move, then front clockwise, so an F, and then U clockwise, and then it is solved. If you want to do a D move where you're going to rotate the bottom part clockwise, then I just use my ring finger back there, and it goes like that, and then if I want to move it backwards, I rotate it, and then I move it down, so I do like an R prime move with my thumb like that. The next step is to memorize all of the algorithms that you need. It's better to practice for five minutes, take a break, five minutes, take a break, rather than doing one big session every day. If you practice the algorithms enough, you'll start to develop muscle memory and you can do them without thinking. Here's an easy way to set up the cube to practice all of your algorithms. So if you start from a fully solved Rubik's cube and you do any algorithm some number of times, you're gonna get back to a fully solved Rubik's cube. The number of times you need to do the algorithm depends on the algorithm itself. If you do the classic beginner algorithm six times, then you're gonna get back to the uh, fully solved Rubik's cube. So that's R, U, R prime, U prime. And there we go. So that's a really easy way that you can practice your algorithms. For the third step, you're gonna practice solving the Rubik's cube with quick glances. So I'm going to look at the Rubik's cube, identify what case I'm in, and then I'm going to do the algorithm without looking. And this is to simulate juggling, where I'm going to be doing the algorithm while looking at the juggling balls. And so you can do this while you're watching TV or talking to someone, like I'm talking to the camera right now. The key is that you wanna make sure that you're doing this just looking at the Rubik's Cube the minimal amount possible. And you can see now that the Rubik's Cube is solved. I can't look at the Rubik's Cube for too long or I'm gonna drop the juggling balls. That's why it's important to just practice doing quick glances. And if I can't quickly find what I'm looking for on the Rubik's Cube, then I'm going to go back to just focusing on the juggling balls and I'm going to look away from the Rubik's Cube just for a little bit. And I'll give you examples of what I look for later in the video. And when I'm looking at the Rubik's Cube, I can still see the juggling balls in my peripheral vision. For the fourth step, you're going to do algorithms while juggling. So you're not solving it yet, you're just doing the algorithms. So first, when you're not juggling, identify how many times you need to do the algorithm to get back into the solved state. So now you're going to do the algorithm that number of times, and if you get back to the fully solved state, then you know that you did it correctly. 
So now I'm doing the move that I showed you earlier and there it goes. It is all solved. Next, I'm going to show you a few example solves and what I look for when I'm solving a Rubik's Cube while juggling. And stay tuned because after the example solves, I'm going to give you a few general tips that really help when you're solving a Rubik's Cube and juggling. You want to make it as easy as possible on yourself to solve the Rubik's Cube. Obviously, it's really difficult, but what I like to do is solve the Rubik's Cube in the easiest way possible. Not necessarily the fastest way, but the way that is going to make my brain the least tired. In the beginner method, this is the first step. You want to get the yellow daisy. But if you're doing CFOP, you're going to skip the yellow daisy and you go straight to the white cross. So when I'm solving a Rubik's Cube with two hands, I go straight to the white cross. But when I'm doing it while juggling, I just use the yellow daisy. I'm a lot better at doing the yellow daisy. It requires a lot less focus and thought. And so that's why I do the yellow daisy. So the next step is to learn how to plan out the yellow daisy or the white cross as much as possible. So if you're not that good at planning out the yellow daisy, the first step is just trying to plan out a few moves. And then as you get better, you can start planning out more. So you want to do the easiest move possible. So I see this red and white piece here. So I'm like, okay, I can move this here. And then I'm going to move it back because I'm trying to plan out all the moves I'm going to do. Then I'm going to reset the cube to how it was. Then I'm going to try to do it while juggling. All right, so that's one move. And then I see if I move that red piece up, then I have this orange piece over here. So then I'll start juggling and I'll do those moves. And then even though I'm not going to touch the white and green edge here or the white and blue edge here, I still know where they are. So let's pretend I'm juggling now. So I'm going to do this. This is super easy. And then this is really easy too. And then after that, I'll start putting the other pieces into place. Now you notice this green piece is already in the right spot. So I'm not going to move this up because it's already looking good. The green and white piece is connected to the green center. So then I'm going to move to the blue piece. I'm going to put it up there. I'm going to rotate and just put this down where it needs to go. And so then something else that's really helpful at this step is to remember opposites. So this is orange and this is red and red is opposite orange. So I know I just need to move this two times over there. Then I can move it down. Then I see that if I put blue right there, we're all good. And now the whole daisy is solved. So if you get three or four white petals and you happen to have one down here, then you don't need to bring this one all the way back up. You can just move it down like this and then you can start working on the rest. If you made it this far into the video, please like and subscribe. This video took me forever because there were so many things that I wanted to cover and it's all free. I'm looking and for this method, I'm just trying to get the corners in the right spot. So I see this corner is almost in the right spot. So then I'm going to look away and then now I'm juggling. And so then I put it down. So while I'm doing the algorithm, I'm not looking at the cube. I'm just juggling. And then I look and I say, oh wait, this corner is also in a good spot. So I'm just going to do the algorithm and then it's in the right spot. Um, then I see here's the blue and red and white one. I'm gonna move it to where it needs to go and then I'm gonna do the algorithm three times. And if you wanna know how many times you'll need to do the algorithm in the beginner method, I have a video that talks about that, which I have linked. Okay, so now I just have one corner left. I'm rotating it and then I'm going to do the left algorithm and then the whole bottom layer is solved. I like to start with the first edge piece that I see in the top layer that has a color besides yellow. So this is the first one I see. I move it to where it is on top of orange. I move it away. And now I'm going to do the left algorithm using the method that I showed you. And then I could just go to the right algorithm. So now I'll show you the other way. So I happen to see another edge here and it's going into the right. Once I identify that case, then I'm going to focus on juggling and do the algorithm. So I'm going to move it away from me. I'm going to do the right algorithm. I don't need to rotate it. I can just do the algorithm that I talked about. And there, it is in the right spot. Same thing with F2L. The edge pieces can be in any place. So first, I like to start with corners that have white on the top because that's the easiest case for me. So I see this is red, white, and blue. This is blue and red. So once I've identified that, I'm going to try to just focus on juggling and put the slot in there without actually looking at the cube. So you'll notice that I did that without rotating the cube. That's an advanced F2L move, and I recommend that you learn that so that you don't have to rotate the cube as much, and it'll be faster. So now I see I have this case over here, which I like. And so then I'll start doing the same thing. 
Okay, now I see that the slot is in the right spot already. So then I just do that. And then I have one more. And then I see this is red, green, and white. I was pretty sure that was it, but I just wanted to double check before I did the move, which is something that I do when I'm juggling as well. So then I just do it. And there are the first two layers. If you're using CFOP, at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to do all the two look OLL and two look PLL cases without learning any new complicated algorithms. You solve the rest of the Rubik's Cube in the same way. You identify what case you're in and then you go back and focus on your juggling. Here are a few general tips that have really helped me. So one thing is remember that you need to blink when you're solving a Rubik's Cube while juggling. Sometimes I forget to blink, my eyes get you know unfocused and then I drop the juggling balls. Similarly, try to remember to breathe. When I'm solving the middle layer of the cube, I know that I need to remind myself to breathe and blink because for me, that's the hardest part of solving the cube. You can also practice solving the Rubik's Cube in sections. If you just want to practice the top layer, you would solve the two middle layers without juggling, and then you would just work on doing the top layer while juggling. Of course, it's really fun to try solving the entire cube without dropping. However, this can be frustrating if you get all the way to the end and then you drop. So when you're learning, you can just pick up the ball wherever you dropped it and continue where you left off. And then once you get better and better, you can try to do the whole thing without dropping. Speaking of feeling frustrated, if you're working on solving the Rubik's Cube while juggling and it just feels too hard and you're really annoyed, you can take a break and instead just work on solving the Rubik's Cube with one hand without juggling. This way you'll still make progress, but you won't feel as frustrated. Here are some ways to deal with the two look OLO and two look PLO cases that are not so easy to do with one hand. Now you can learn some new algorithms, but if you really don't feel like getting bogged down with learning new algorithms and you just want to get straight into solving a Rubik's Cube while juggling, this is what you can do. A really tricky OLO case is the U case. So instead of doing the normal algorithm, I do this one. Normally you would have the headlights in front like this, but for this algorithm, you need to have the headlights in the back. And so here is the algorithm. Now, admittedly, it's pretty long, but it's a lot easier to remember. There you go. Okay, so for the T and L case, it's gonna be awkward because you're gonna have to move two at once. So what I try to do is really grip the side that I'm not moving, so the left side with my other fingers, and then I just try to move it like that. And yeah, it's pretty awkward, which is why most people will learn a new algorithm. But if you don't want to, this is how you do it. And the L case is really similar, so I'm not going to show you that one, but it's the same principle. There are two PLL cases that involve a middle move, and obviously that's really hard to do with one hand. So I've discovered there's a way that you can get around it. So this is the opposite edge swap. So you have orange over here, and then red over there, and then blue there, and green there. So you're going to do the algorithm as though you're moving a right edge into the left spot. Okay, and then when you do that, you'll end up in the case where you're actually moving the right edge into the left spot. So then you just do it again. And now I'll show you a similar workaround with the other case. Here's the adjacent edge swap case. So you have orange and green here, and then green and orange right there, and then red and blue, and then blue and red. You're gonna set it up like you normally would for to look OLL, but you're gonna do the same algorithm as though you're moving the right edge into the left spot. Okay, and then you look and you are actually in that case. So you're gonna do the same thing. So the cool thing about this, for three of the four PLL cases, you're gonna start with the same algorithm. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you made it this far, you are awesome. And I wish you the best of luck and solving your Rubik's Cube while juggling or whatever you're trying to do. Keep juggling and have fun.